Hey everybody, this is part two of our series detailing Gun Owners of America's report on the ATF's registry. I'm Phil Raboli and this is the Minuteman Moment. In our first episode, we talked about the history of the ATF's gun registry and what led up to GOA creating its report. For this episode, I want to explain what the law says and how our report demonstrates the ATF is in violation of federal law. The Firearm Owners Protection Act, or FOPA, explicitly prohibits the federal government from doing two things. One, the Fed is not allowed to enact any rule or regulation to require that records required to be maintained under this chapter or any portion of the contents of such records be recorded at or transferred to a facility owned, managed, or controlled by the United States. Second, ATF is not allowed to use a rule or regulation to establish any system of registration of firearms, firearms owners, or firearm transactions or dispositions. Okay, I just said a lot, let me break it down for you. Basically, they can't demand records be sent to government property and they can't create a registry. That's it. There's also appropriations restrictions, which is just another way of saying where you can and can't spend money. Those restrictions prohibit the ATF from searching records by name. Hereafter, no funds made available by this or any other act may be used to electronically retrieve information gathered pursuant to 18 U.S.C. 923 G4 by name or any other personal identification code. And ATF is also prohibited from centralizing records. No funds appropriated herein or hereafter shall be available for salaries or administrative expenses in connection with consolidating or centralizing within the Department of Justice the records or any portion thereof of acquisition or disposition of firearms maintained by federal firearms licensees. Here's the quick and dirty of what that means. Everything the ATF is doing with its gun registry is illegal. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty clear to me. You would think this would make the case closed on any legal options for a registry of gun owners, but that's not the way it's working right now. Even though the law is clear, you can't centralize records and they can't be searchable. But here's how the ATF made a centralized and searchable record system anyway. If that sounds confusing to you, let me explain. According to documents provided in ATF's FOIA response, to GOA, digital records received from dealers are centrally managed and shared by multiple applications and business groups across the ATF enterprise. Access requests for employees to use these systems are also centrally managed through another broader system known as the Access Module, formerly known as eRequest, and that's within the ATF service catalog. I'm not gonna lie, even GOA was pretty shocked when we saw them literally admit they had a centralized system. You had better bet we're suing them for violating federal law. We'll keep you up to date on any developments. It's important to keep in mind that when FOPA was originally enacted back in the 80s, it was long before anyone had any clue about the mass storage capabilities of the internet. The law was written when these records were all paper and placed in a massive shipping container in the parking lot of the National Tracing Center. Although the law is already pretty clear, the ATF is clearly taking advantage of the upgrade in technology. That's how they're getting around federal law. In the FOIA, the ATF provides this illustration to demonstrate where the records go once they receive them. It's kind of funny. You would think it looks an awful lot like the arrows are pointing towards one centralized system. Of course, the ATF assures us that this is not a registration system. But funnily enough, when they scan the paper records, each record gets run through the registration module. That's what it's called. And they tell us that the bureaucrats at the ATF who work on this system aren't allowed to search anyone's name. The problem is, the ATF can easily search through their centralized database if they chose to ignore the law, because they actually have the capability to just go ahead and do that. And why wouldn't they? These scanners come with something called Docnetic software. And we looked into Docnetic software's capabilities. Take a look at its brochure. You can find this for yourself if you want. Docnetics are able to check OCR data or optical character recognition data and redact part of documents for security. So the ATF can read all of the handwriting on a particular firearms transaction record and turn the entire record into digital searchable data. But the ATF is also technically capable of disabling a single portion of the document, like where you would search for a name. Notably, like with ATF's final searchable database, this feature can be enabled or disabled. So basically, 
they can decide to search for a name or they can just turn that feature off whenever they want. Look, here's an example they show of reading a medical form you fill out at the doctor's office. It pulls the patient's name, city, and policy number. They're absolutely capable of scanning a form 4473 and pulling your name, address, and serial number. In fact, they do pull all data, except apparently we have to trust that they've disabled scanning the name box. What we're told by the ATF is that they hit the disable button for searching by name and would never switch it back on. Let me know below if you actually believe the ATF's pinky promise not to search these records by name. The FOIA response from the ATF informed us of exactly what search capabilities they have presently enabled on this machine. They can even search for your firearms make, model, serial number, caliber, and weapon type, among other functions. From the search results, they can pull up your form 4473 and then see your name, address, and social security number. What's stopping them from switching that button back on and letting Docnetics search by name and address or social security number if the government decides that your weapon of war is too dangerous. If the government can violate the Constitution and ban automatic weapons, what's stopping them from arbitrarily banning any type of semi-automatic weapon? All that they need to do is flip a switch, search by whatever gun of the week feels scary, then print out a list of addresses. The technology they use is so sophisticated the businesses they contract to scan their documents literally brags on their website about how they can scan cursive handwritten words and turn them into digital searchable text on a digital document. And I kid you not, the instruction manual literally says you can use control F to search. So who cares if they don't bother to search for your name when they decide to go door to door to take your AR-15s? They can create a list of everyone who bought an AR-15 in their system and easily find out which door to knock on. The Fed coming for your guns will know where you live and how many guns you own. They won't care what your name is. And it's all because of this gun registry that we're fighting back on. This is only the tip of the iceberg. The only thing more scandalous than this registry's illegal existence is its justification. And in the next episode of this series, I'll explain how gun tracing is not some sacred cow that must never be questioned. If you want to see me take on that issue, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of our next video. Also, don't forget to share this video and give us a like so we can get more people aware of what's going on.